yacht of the 80s. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Beyond the 80 podcast brought to you by Neds. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Talentai, and as always, I'm joined by some very special guests right across the gra- game of rugby league to talk all the latest news and opinions. But most importantly, have a bit of fun along the day. And uh, speaking of fun, I'm, uh, I'm joined by two uh, legends of the game. We, we need to use that word for these two. Our first one uh, definitely epitomises fun, uh, at least he thinks that. Uh, welcome to the, the podcast, Liam Fulton. Yeah, thanks, Dan. How are you, buddy? Yeah, doing really well, mate. Uh, and our second guest, uh, perhaps the most bravest guest we've had so far, because he agreed to come on knowing that Liam Fulton was on. Um, so in all seriousness, welcome to the podcast, our West Tigers legend, Robbie Farrah. Hey, mate, how are you? I thought you were going to introduce me there when you said our first guest epitomises fun. <laughs> So you didn't say cranky. <laughs> uh, boys, thanks for joining us today. I trust you both well and keeping safe. Uh, Fultz, I guess, uh, be pretty busy at home with uh, a couple of daughters and, and kind of businesses on the side, mate. How's, how's everything been for you at the moment, mate? Yeah, it's not been too bad. Um, you know, I'm used to a bit of isolation, working from home already. So I've been doing that now for about, oh, for about four or five years now. So... Um, I enjoy spending a bit of extra time with my daughters. Um, um, you know, it's been, it's been, oh, not being able to get out of the house is a bit tough, but um, apart from that, mate, I'm not too, it's not too bad. Rob, for you, mate, I saw you just started uh, working with On Solar, a new business as well to go with some, some other things you're doing on the side. How, how are you traveling, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I was quite fortunate, you know, having retired last year, I was quite flexible in what I was doing this year. So, um, in terms of work, uh, it's, it's obviously affected 247, my events company. There's obviously no no events at the moment. There's no overseas travel. So we've put that on the back burner for a little bit. But um, as you said, I, um, I've jumped on board with On Solo, who, who came on board as a West Tiger sponsor this year. And they've given me a, a role as, as a part of the company. So I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed learning about what they do and, and getting stuck into that. So, um, yeah, I'm quite enjoying it, to be honest. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time again today, guys. We'll have a bit of fun, relive some old stories. We'll finish up with a little game of, of You're the Coach. Uh, thank you to Neds for your support. And first, we'll jump in and go through the history books right after the break. That's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. Thank you for joining us today on the Beyond the 80 podcast. And it's only fitting since we have two legends of the game and of West Tigers on the show. We might delve back in time a little bit and see if we can get the truth on a few stories that we've heard about. Um, boys, you both debuted at a very young age in 2003. Uh, Fultz, I guess we might start with, with you on this one. You'd, you'd come through West SG Ball, a premiership winning captain, I might add. And then uh, you kind of had to wait the entirety of that season before getting a crack in the final game of the year. Did you know, like obviously Sheenzy was the coach then, did you know that you were going to be making your debut in that last round of the year or...? Uh, no, I was. Uh, I think Farrell kind of made his debut mid-season. Uh, I kind of remember that making his debut. Gibbo made his debut uh, kind of during the year as well. And I remember about maybe about four, four or five weeks out from the from the end of the year, Shinji pulled me into his office and said to me, "Mate, you're a bit skinny. You're a bit too too lean. Are you going to put on a bit of muscle? You're not going to be able. To, we're not going to probably debut you through maybe mid next year." And I was like, "Oh yeah, all right. Well, you know, I was only 19 at the time. I was." Um, you know, I was still a bit, uh, you know, nervous to talk to Shandy, so I didn't really say anything. And then all of a sudden, uh, Terry Hill doesn't like travelling to New Zealand, apparently, uh, but I heard. And uh, he pulled out late in um, for the last game, and, and Shandy just threw me in there. Didn't really, uh, didn't really say anything to me. Just pulled, threw me in there. And uh, yeah, I, I was uh, lucky enough to play the last game. And then during 2004, I only played maybe I think three games that year, so I didn't play that many games that year either. So I just kind of had to. They're waiting for me to put some muscle on. It just never happened. <laughs> Rob, I guess you were probably in a pretty similar boat. I guess you, you played that a handful of games in 03 and then kind of unfortunately that injury, I think, the next year. What's that like when you're kind of waiting to get a crack? Do you know what I mean? Like when there's blokes in front of you, what's that? how's that waiting kind of like? Um, yeah, it's difficult, but I was, I was quite young. So you just got to be patient. And for me, it was um, about learning. You know, I came into the squad when uh, Darren Center and Robbie Mears were the hookers and, I remember quite clearly, like I still talk to Darren about it. Then uh, he, he really took me under his wing, especially at training and, and started, um, you know, taught me what it was like to train as a first grader. And he always tells a story, actually. He said, I, I went up to him as a kid. I said, why, I said, why are you helping me? I said, I want to take your spot. 
And uh, he said, no, he said, I, he said, I know you want to take my spot. He said, but like, he said, my, my time's always, almost done, you know? So, um, yeah, he, he was passing the baton over to me and, and really taught me a training and uh, took me under his wing. So, um, and then I had that injury and had to work to get hard, you know, work hard to get back from that. I probably wasn't, wasn't ready to play 80 minutes um, anyway. So yeah, Benny Galea was starting at hooker and, and I was coming off the bench and then, and then slowly, as I got more comfortable and got a bit more match fit and a bit bigger, um, obviously, like with Fultz, you know, we'll probably both, well, not just even Benji, all of us young guys, we were quite, quite young and quite small. We, our bodies probably hadn't, hadn't developed and filled out. So we needed a bit of time to, to build ourselves up to get ready for the weekly grind of the NRL. Yeah, right. Uh, Fultz, you said you were a bit scared of Sheen still at the time. When did you start to come into your own? Still scared of him. <laughs> when did you start to come into your own with these practical jokes, mate? Like, when did you start getting hmm. confident enough to start being the joker of the team? Was that kind of in that? No, I think it was just kind of a, no, I just, I think that's just my personality. Though. I didn't, I don't really uh, mean to be the joker. I just, uh, look, Daniel Fitzhenry, he was kind of, uh, he was the main joker and I was just his bit of his sidekick. I was just doing his little bit of his puppetry work. He used to do it. <laughs> but everyone was scared of Fitzhenry. No one was scared of me. So no one would mess with Fitzhenry, but, Potholes. Yeah, old potholes. Even, even, I remember even Sheenzy. Fitzy used to do things to Sheenzy, and Sheenzy used to go, it's all right, it's Fitz Henry. You know, if I did the Sheenzy, Sheenzy would like, come down to me and crush me. And anything uh, in particular that he got away with? Is there anything that stands out there? Fitzy, Fitzy used to, Fitzy, I remember one day at training, um, Brian Hyder was our old trainer. And when we were at lunch, we used to always just hang around like where the gym is. Kind of similar. I think it's like TC's office. That's where Hyde's office used to be. Yep. So just kind of outside Fitzy, that gym area there. Yeah. Mm. Fitzy, Fitzy flipped everything upside down in, in Hyde's <laughs> office, like his desk, and then like put everything back on perfectly and then rolled up the, uh, the foam mat and shoved it in inside the door. And then obviously when it opened up, it, it like flipped open. But because it was Fitzhenry, it was like a... I remember we got pulled into the, to the meeting room and... And he's like, oh, whoever did this, you should. And then obviously Fitzy said it was me. And then as soon as he said it was me, he kind of just walked, they just walked out. It was all right. Because it was Fitzhenry. <laughs> like, no, like, he, could, he couldn't get in trouble. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you weren't, you weren't quite the same, mate. Did you, did you cop a bit of, bit of grief when you would try and do a few things? Or? Me, oh, mate. I used to, mate, uh, I used to be, as soon as anything happened, I was in trouble for it. Because even if it wasn't me, I used to cop the blame for it. Always. <laughs> No, you, you, you and Gibbo used to harm yourself. That's what Sheenzy was pissed off with you boys about. Because you're always worried about you injuring yourself with the dumb <laughs> you were doing. <laughs> ah, fools. <laughs> the Swiss, remember the, remember the, the Swiss ball the challenge. Like, the, the Sattler cover tackle. The Sattler cover like, tackle. <laughs> the Swiss ball challenge. Oh, you yeah, trying to read What was your Swiss the ball one? The Swiss ball ones, we used to just go like as fast as we could at each other with holding a Swiss ball and just hit each other. But I remember that time when we used to do it. I used to kind of always jump and give you the fling yeah. really far. But remember Shannon McDonald and Shannon Yeah, Dyer, yeah, yeah I was about... and, that, and the, the balls went down and they crushed, they smashed heads. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was it. All right, no, that, that's it. That's what Sheenzy would just be worried about. These boys hurting themselves, just doing dumb shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, you kind of both, by the time 2005 comes around, you guys are kind of, as you said, coming into your own in that season. And I know you've spoken about that year a lot. I guess... Probably what kind of seemed to stand out was you beat the Cowboys by 50 in the semi final, and then obviously the grand final as well. Was there a bit of grudge between those two sides there? Like, was there any kind of niggling that kind of went on? I'm just, I'm just referencing a few incidents <laughs> that popped up in the, in the coming years <laughs> that involved both of you. Uh, was there a genuine kind of niggle or grudge there at all, or was it just kind of what happened? Well, look, I don't try. Yeah, again. yeah, well, we tried to ruin his career. We almost did. We wishboned him. <laughs> Oh, uh, so no, that was, that was what that 2008 one up in Townsville was that that one? Was that 2008? Was it? Yeah, that was 2008. Yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I, I think there was a bit of lasting resentment. That, I think because we beat them in the grand final. I think any teams that play in a grand final, there's always a bit of a rivalry, and that kind of just grew. And then Fultz took it one step too far when he wishboned Luke O'Donnell. Jesus, <laughs> what? A, no, no, we we always had the wood over the Cowboys. Generally, we we we, we yeah. beat them more more than they beat us. So. Uh, you know, even even when we went to Townsville, we kind of had a bit of success against them. So maybe that was the the catalyst for them hating us. Because had a couple of had a couple of targets in their, uh, in their front row. The too, yeah. hey? Didn't you, didn't you fight? You fought, you fought the hooker at like that level. Two thousand nine. Oh, right? what? That was nine. Yeah, yeah. But I was talking about their front rowers. Remember, remember uh, the game plan? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shane Tronk. Shane oh, Tronk, Shane right, Tronk. And, yeah, Tronk. And, and Rahi as well. That's right, yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you kind of talk about there, mate? Like, is they like sports? <laughs> do, we, do we want to know? Or? Fultz, Fultz, yeah, yeah. Fultz can tell the story. Oh, no, I don't know the full story. I just remember what you used to call them. So, yeah. No, because so it was part of our game plan where we used to target an opposition front rower and and myself, obviously being you know the hooker in the middle and obviously a bit quicker and a bit fitter. We'd we'd have a game plan to try to try and tire out. Uh, opposition front rower and then and then once I knew once I knew he was gone like fatigued we'd just like we'd flood through the middle and get a penalty or get a line break and stuff so we had a special special name for that and um <laughs> Rahihi and um and Tronk were two of my favorite targets well got a got a bit of joy against them do you reckon that's probably something teams should do more now like if you're, you're thinking about the interchange goes down even more or like there's less chance but I guess there's probably front rowers are just so mobile these days. It probably becomes yeah, it's a little like, bit it's tougher. Like, it's changed. Hey? The front rowers are changed because they're all like kind of like lean and fit. There's no real, well, there's not too many really big front rowers anymore, is there? Yeah. 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 Kind of like, like, like Payne Haas is pretty tough to tie her well, Toddy, Toddy Payton used to say that when he, when he was playing for Canberra, I can't remember what might have been in the, in the when Toddy Payton played that long, he probably played in the eighties. I remember they had the, um, that unlimited changes, and he used to say that he used to have a front row that used to just come on for the taps and just run the taps. <laughs> came on, ran the tap, and then ran off. Unlimited change. That's crazy, uh, Rob. Uh, we touched on it quickly. I just want to kind of uh, just go to that 2009 year, mate. You speak mm. about that fight. I just want to know: Did you? When did you know it was on? Like, when did you? Was there a moment that you knew no. it was happening, or it kind of just one of those things that kind of just you know kept building? No, no, well. Well, everyone knows that scrum where he hit me and everyone um, says, oh, what did you do to him? I, I, mean, I honestly did nothing to him. I didn't even know he would hit me until... So, be, so we scored off that scrum, if everyone remembers. Yeah, Benji and goes in on, the corner. Yeah, Benji goes in the corner and I was on the ground with a little cut over my eye and I was like, what, what the F just happened? Um, and it wasn't until I saw the replay on the big screen who had actually hit me and then... I went up to the ref on the day who was Shane Hay and I said, mate, you better do something about this. And he, he just gave him a warning um didn't send him to the bin or anything i said mate if you don't do something about it i will and then um we got the ball off the kickoff and then about four plays later i think we'd lost the ball uh so scrum packed down and then gibbs gibbs and i think scandal so do you know friend. do you know going yeah, into that scrum oh yeah, yeah. He did. because, I, because he didn't because have the your arms on yeah the ref did arms nothing under. The ref did nothing and I said, mate, I said, mate, if you don't do this, I'm taking it into my own hands. So I thought, I'm not copping that, like getting King here. Um, and then Gibbo, and I was trash talking. I said, mate, you're like, and he, and he had this little smirk on his face. At the scrum. He's like, oh, what are you going to do? You, your, your big nose, your big nose C. <laughs> like, that's what he was saying to me. Oh, I and, um, that. Which, I, which I couldn't understand because my nose is beautiful. But um, <laughs> so, it is and he was like I laughing at me. And then, I, and then I just said to him, I said, I said you're, you're dead. You're dead. Like whatever, and then um, and then Gibbs, Gibbs and Scando were were standing next to me, and they're like, "Mate, do you want us to get him for you?" I said, "No." Nah. I said, "You just hold their front rowers." I said, "He's mine." So I packed with a, an arm loose, and um, Gibbs, Gibbs and uh, Scando, I think Carl Webb and uh, can't remember their front rowers were, but they they kind of held onto them, so they couldn't get involved. Anyway, Shane Hayne, he he saw us chirping before the scrum pack, and he said to me, "He goes, mate, Robbie, just keep it short and sweet, like as in the scrum." And I just I just looked at him and said, "Don't worry, I will." And um, and I just started laying in with him, and um, it's it's funny because we both like we were we were off our game that day. We started really flat. I think we were down like eight nil, and then um, that really sparked us into. I got ten in the bin, so did he, and sparked us into action, and we ended up coming back winning the game quite convincingly. And I still remember the post-match function back at Leichhardt, uh, at Balmain Leeds Club afterwards. And Roycey Simmons gave me our Man of the Match award just for, <laughs> him, just, just for hitting him. <laughs> and, he said, and he said, mate, he, he said, like, if I didn't hit him, that he would have been that filthy with me. Um, so I, I got our Man of the Match award just for, just for retaliating and hitting him. But um, it was, yeah, it was kind of silly from Watts because, um, it, like, as I said, they... Um, they were all over us to start the game, but it sparked us into action and, and uh, we ended up winning quite comfortably. Obviously, you kind of get a fair bit of niggle in the middle of the field. Is that kind of the only time that you've 
you've properly kind of had a go or someone's kind of had a go at you? Like, there's been nah. a few little ones. Is there yeah. any others? The, the, that... There was another one at Campbelltown. I don't know if everyone remembers with uh, Nathan Friend from the Gold Coast. So, um, right, yeah. so, uh, so that was the year where um, Gold Coast were trying to sign me. Uh, if everyone remembers, I, um, you know, I went up and two of their facilities and, and whatever. And, um, and obviously Friendy wasn't happy, happy about that because it was quite public. Um, and then we played him that night and he kept, he kept hitting me late and whatever. And then I started getting a bit chirpy with him. I said, mate, I said, geez, your, your club must love you. They're trying to pay me twice as much. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and he was filthy. And then it was just a war of words. And then we got into the scrum and he kind of had butted me. So then it ended up in a, um, a massive brawl. And then, we, I think I threw the first punch that night too, but we got the penalty and Mark Minatello got sent to the bin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's 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 was, uh, no video ref back then. Bloody hell, watching fights. Oh, no. Well, to you, uh, that, that 2009 year was your year in England. Were you still in contact with much most of the boys throughout that time? or No, I got shipped off. I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone that year. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Nah. What was that? What was the question? Sorry. I was just like, like that 2009 year, like you're watching. Did you did you see Robbie? No, and- you know what? I actually didn't watch any games that whole year. Like we don't in England. It's I don't know how they. I, I didn't really watch any Super League. There's nothing on TV over there. Like there's a, uh, I mean, like there's no. I think they they showed like maybe one game a week on TV or maybe two games a week. But well, that next year is that 2010. Oh. Fultz is back. Rob, you were kind of there throughout <laughs> that time. It seemed like things kind of took off again. Like obviously, Lottie came mm. in. Um, I think Gareth Ellis was that was his second year. Maltz was probably fine as well. Benji was the best player yeah. in the world. Like were things just kind of clicking? Yeah, I think um, obviously we had our cycle there in 05 where we won the comp, and then it kind of fell away. All, most of the boys kind of left and moved on. Guys retired, um, and then you know 2010, 11. We we started. We had a group there again where we had like you said, Ashford, Maltz, and Lottie Takiri came on board. Um, we had this this unbelievable side. You know, Gareth Ellis had come over uh, from England, who had a massive impact on our club. And then, um, uh, looking back now, you, you have groups where you're really close with and you form a bond with, and that's definitely what we got with the 05 side. And I think it's definitely what we got with that 2010-11 group. Yep. Um, guys that we're still you know, very close with are now Bo Hino. Um, you know, the list goes on. So. Yeah. Yeah, we had a. We, uh, the, you know, looking back in my career, I think the the most fun that we had, and Fultz would probably agree. Yeah. The most fun that we had was probably those couple of years. Yeah, you know, every day at training was just the biggest laugh. Like you had Fultz lunch, and Gibbo we just. Go, we used to go for lunch. Every lunch. Day together. Yeah, we were a really close close group, and uh, yeah, mate, there are a million laughs from from that time in my career. I, I wish. Um, yeah, if you could go back to any time in your career outside of winning the comp in 05, it would probably yeah. be that couple yeah, of years. 10 and 11. 10 and 11, 10 and 11 yeah. yeah. And then, because and then, after that, the boys kind of, like, obviously, all the boys moved on, like, um, Bryson, Hino, Bo, they all went to the Sharks. Yeah. And, you, had, uh, you, had a good, you had a good 2009, like, the, back in the year. Oh, we you did, know, but so then, yeah, then... Kind of ran, kind we of lost that a good season. Yeah, we lost that game against Para where yeah. Nella bro- broke his fire. ankle and, yeah, yeah. and Hain, and Para end up making the grand final. And if we win that game against Para, I reckon we probably could have made a run for it that year, but wasn't meant to be. Well, that and yeah, you think about that. Taniella, he had what twenty-one tries. That's that's a West Tigers record that still stands. And he got injured in you know with four or five weeks to go. Like that could yeah. have been a pretty ridiculous season from from him. Yeah, well, mate, he was like even now looking back, probably well, easily the most oh, destructive was- winger of. I've ever played with and then you think if he doesn't get injured and then a year later we'd have him and Lottie on the wings yeah. you know, going into that 2010 season it's 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 a pretty um yeah, yeah it's a pretty side. lethal yeah, yeah. pretty decent side you add Nella to that side that we had um and then you throw in uh geez I can't even remember what year it was but Simon Dwyer who I think he was yeah he would have been in that 2011 he, he team, definitely yeah yeah he got injured yeah. in 2012 11 yeah. 11 or 12 11, 11. Because 10, was, 10 was the well. semi-finals against the Roosters. Yeah, no, it was. It was 11. I remember it was 11. 11, yeah. 11. Yeah, so I yeah, think... you, when you look at the careers being cut short, like Nella and, um, and Simon Dwyer, yeah, two, two players that could have had 
you know, very long and successful careers at the Tigers. It's a, it's a, oh. it's quite a shame to be honest. Well, Sim- yeah. Simo will be held with Simo now. What, twenty eight or something? Twenty nine, wouldn't you? Uh, so probably be older. Yeah, no, about that. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's always, was he 21? Well, he would have been like 21 or something. Yeah, uh, what, 2000? Yeah, yeah. I think maybe, maybe 30. You've said it before, mate, that you felt like you had a, a premiership there and you kind of let one slip. Like, is that, are they kind of two of the most heartbreaking ways to lose a final? Like, those two years in back to back would have just, how yeah. do you kind of respond from that to come back? You know what I mean? Like, when you've kind of gone out like that, how do you come back the next year? Yeah, you know, um, it's, a, it's tough. And, and then going into the 2012 season too, I think, I think we were premiership favourites at the start of the 12 season. But, um, yeah. but t- 10 and 11 really, yeah, I think it really hurt us. And then we had all those changes at the end of 11 where, as, as I mentioned, those guys moved on and we probably never recovered from it because, yeah, looking back, um, like those guys, Gibbs and... and and Hino, they were almost like a part of the fabric at our club and the glue and, mm. and Bowie. Yeah, even, and, even Bowie, yeah. Yeah, and um, when they moved on, it was, it was kind of like we lost our soul a little bit. And, um, mm. you know, that, we never really recovered from it. But, yeah, I think 2010, like 11, we lost that game to the Warriors. We were up by 12. And, um, you know, we, we shouldn't Gibbo, really have Gibbo lost that injured. one. Yeah. I think. Yeah, even that Roosters semi you talked about in 2010, I think there were a heap of Well, that was the one, in that, yeah. in that game, too. There's a heap of injuries in that one. and Yeah. Probably one of the best passes I've ever seen, though. It was like a triple cutout straight onto Kenny Dow's chest. Yeah, after I, did, I never got any accolades for that, for that um, dry fish. Either. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll move on. No, we'll we'll move on. <laughs> no but, but back to your question. Like, 2010, I think, was the year. That, that's the one I look back with, with massive regret. Like, if we beat the Roosters at night, we get the week off. Um, going to a preliminary final. Um, instead, I think Gold Coast got the week off. We went down to Canberra and won down there, which is a hard thing to do. And then, then we okay. should have even Jared then, then, miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going into that semi against the uh, the Dragons, Todd Payton rolls his rolls his ankle on a tennis ball two days yeah. before the game. We lose Toddy, who he was the leader of our pack and uh, he was the link between our forwards and our halves with his ball playing ability. And then. We lose that game by a Jamie South field goal. And then the, the set before, I think Lottie, Lottie, got I think Lottie, Lottie, Lottie yeah, gets yeah. kneed in the ribs by Jeremy Smith. There's no penalty. And Jeremy Smith gets, um, gets charged by the match review committee later on. But there's no penalty. Dragons get the ball and kick the field goal to win the game. And then, yeah, we lose by a point when um, that, that was a tough, tough one to swallow because I really believe that was the year we, we should have won it. Yeah, yeah. I guess you kind of talk about that cycles and I think that's interesting because you kind of look then, if you kind of skip forward a few years, you get a 2014 and I can kind of, you know, I remember that one actually quite clear. You know, you're up at Newcastle and I think you, we've got a heap of injuries in that game um, in 2014 and you kind of grind out this 23-20 win. Pat Richards hits this ridiculous sideline field goal to put you in front and I think it's around, wrapped around round 13 and you're sitting in equal fourth but that's the last game that, that Fultz you ever played. Like, that's, that's, that's the one I think David Falongo got you over the top and um, that's kind of the last game that you played for the club. I, I know you kind of don't... Fultz won't want the recognition, Rob, but how much of an impact is kind of losing someone like him <laughs> mid-season? Like, on a serious note. Like, no. Oh, I, I, say, I say it to Fultz all the time. Like, like, people ask me who are the best players you played with and, the, and there's different... There's different reasons what, what makes someone so great. But, yeah, for me, if, if Fultz was... And in all honesty, like, we make fun of his dog's body. Like, he's, he doesn't look like a footy... He doesn't, he doesn't look like a footy player. You see him in the gym. He can't even, like, bench press 60 kilos. But, I can bench 65 now. But you put, you put him on a footy field and, um, and, in all honesty, like, he was probably one of the toughest guys I played with. He'd be, he'd be back there on play two, taking carries after a kick, after a kick return. Um, we, we had a little combination because he's actually quite smart, even though he's quite dumb <laughs> off the field. He's quite smart for you playing. We, we, um, we formed a little combination ourselves. We had a little play called a bread and butter, which is like a little run around. And yeah, he knew what I was thinking. I knew what he was thinking. Uh, he formed some great combination with Benji. I think if you ask Benji, um, he'll tell you that Fultz is one of his, his favourite back roles that he played with just because of his footy smarts and the lines he ran. Um, and I think if, if Liam was probably 10 kilos heavier, um, oh, I've got no doubt he, he would have had a long representative career for Australia and New South Wales. But unfortunately, um, 
his genetics did him no favour. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame um, my mum and Mark, dad for that. Mark, yeah, <laughs> Mark wouldn't let me down in, in, in that area, mate. But um, no, uh, yeah, pound for pound, um, probably one of the best I've played with, to be honest. Yeah. Fultz, thanks for just... This is an audio podcast, but Fulks is flexing, so thanks, mate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fulks, you obviously made the decision to retire after that game. I guess, was that something that you knew kind of straight away that that was going to be it, or...? Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, no, I think I actually leave, I left the ground when uh, when I played up in Newcastle. I, my dad always used to used to drive home with my dad, and I remember hearing on the radio that someone saying uh, that I've had multiple concussions this year. I should probably retire. That was the furthest thing from my mind. I was yeah, I was actually thinking I'd just have another maybe a week or two off because I actually came back from I think I can't remember what round it was. <laughs> um, versus Newcastle, but it might have been like mid, maybe around nine or 10 or something like that. I actually just came back from, uh, I had a bulging disc in my back. So I actually had about like four to five weeks off anyway. Yep. But then I think it was my first game back and I, and I yeah, and then I, when I got concussed, uh, I think they were talking about, because um, it was kind of still pretty new, that with yeah, all this yeah. kind of con- 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 concussion stuff, and I was, uh, I was definitely under the microscope because I was, anything that happened to me, you know, it was, uh, you know, well documented at the time, um, but I did I did a fair few tests with the doctor from Newcastle, and then they sent me to Melbourne, and I did a couple of tests down there. <clears throat> and his his because they don't really know they still don't even know a lot about it. But they um his advice was um he can't if if I got hit in the head again it could be catastrophic, and uh and that was kind of I suppose the turning point when. My wife read the. I wouldn't even read the report that because it was a buddy long report, and I was like, I'm not even reading it because I was actually thinking. And then when my wife read it, she was like, No, maybe we should talk to the uh, talk to the club about this because she was adamant that I shouldn't be playing anymore after what she read. And I, by this stage, I was still kind of, you know, I still wanted to play, but after you know, I just had my first child, so I kind of. Uh, and then the and the Tigers are like, and I think the NRL were kind of a bit scared. Tigers were a bit scared, and they they basically said that um, we'll honour your contract if you work for the club, but we kind of don't want you to play anymore. And that was kind of, I suppose, the uh, yeah, learning learning about that. I suppose I uh, yeah, I kind of had to had to mm. pull the pin. When, when he says work, when, yeah, he, but... when he says work for the club, <laughs> that was that yeah. was just hanging out in the physio room. Oh, yeah, no, we really... definitely he definitely was always upstairs for a pub lunch run on Friday. Uh, I definitely saw him up there then. <laughs> I was the main contributor to the club. <laughs> Mate, uh, this is a story I want to get some clarification on. You, uh, I remember this one. You guys were, I think, full to you, just, you were telling the boys on field. Everyone was kind of in a huddle. And I think the media were there and everyone started laughing. And you <laughs> afterwards, Fultz, said that you'd tell the boys you were going to become a full-time talent scout for your wife's business. Is that- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually was pretty teary, actually, when I was telling the boys. I think I told Farrah, I rang Farrah. I think you might have an origin, Farrah, when I told you. Mm. I think when I rang you, um, yeah, but I've uh, my I've been I've been a part time talent scout for Ed Models now for the last five years, and the, since I've been doing that, the the business has definitely flourished. I'm a brand um, ambassador too. Farrah is a brand. Farrah is actually the the main model that we that they got using for the for the gigs. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get it actually if they, if we wanted to get more work, you had to get his nose fixed. So that's why he's had to do the plastic surgery on his nose. So if anyone sees him, just you know, oh. give it a little bit of a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But, um, it, it, it time, some mate. of the events. Yeah, and full for you, mate. I guess you're kind of still been working. Obviously, you kind of were involved with the club, but you did a bit of junior coaching, a bit of senior coaching. Obviously, your kind of your Fulton financial business was kind of all the paperwork got done off the West Tigers printers. It was kind of <laughs> yeah. you, you, you kind of were doing a number of different things in there, mate. Yeah, well, I kind of had it. I was, I was. It was made me pretty clear that from Grant that this is kind of my time. Uh, contract was up that I was going to have to find something else to do so I kind of uh, had to figure out what I wanted to do within the two year period and I found out pretty quickly that I wanted to be a broker within yeah you know, I think it was maybe six months and so I basically had my office out of Concord all my all my um all my printing was done there um all my phone calls were made on your phones you know as if it was my office phone sometimes uh I think at the time Tegan Tegan was the secretary or, or Laura they used to I used to make them um some, pretend to be my secretary sometimes um, just to you know, get my nails up. <laughs> but um, no, I did enjoy. I did enjoy actually working at the Tigers, working at the Tigers. Yeah. I um, I uh, it was it was the office kind of, yeah. It was not definitely not for me though. Being in an office like 
cooped up in a cage. I can't, I can't, I, I don't know how you guys do it day to day for, for you know, from nine to five. I remember my first day at the, the office. I, mean, I don't think you ever five, did nine, a nine to five. Was not, no, no, my first day <laughs> was nine to five. And I, and I remember going home at like getting home at five thirty and saying, well, I am not doing that ever again. I would rather <laughs> like just quit. And I, ran, I said to my, I just, I just couldn't sit there for that long. It was just so long and boring. And then Grant, must have, he came up to me and goes, all right, you can leave it at four. And then four turned into three. And then three turned into bloody 12. And then, and then I stopped coming. I just, I just couldn't be there anymore. <laughs> so, that is very accurate. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. And then some days I'd have a couple of days off in a row. Uh, but no one had, I had no, I had no one to, yeah, it was just, but it was a great no one answer to. It was, yeah, I had no one answered. It was a great two years. And then, but then I think Grant got resold. And then the new CEO came in, uh, pa- uh, Pasco. And he kind of had no idea what I was doing there. He's like, what is he like, doing there? Like, <laughs> I had no role. There was no role for me. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't have anything. I did, I did actually do it. As you said, I did a bit of the work with the, the junior footy. Macca got me doing stuff with uh, the young kids. I went to Queensland a couple of times with him. I, did, I was just like a bit of a gap filler, you know. So I didn't really have any specific role. But it was, right. it was enjoyable. And Rob, you're of course still playing throughout this time. Obviously, some kind of massive highs and lows. But I guess kind of want to take you to that final day at Leichhardt, mate. I had a look. You played forty. You'd played forty-one games at Leichhardt before then. Had I bet you never thought you were going to end up having a day like that one, though. No, oh, no, nah. not not after leaving in um, in sixteen. You know, even to. Um, I never thought I'd ever be back at the Tigers, to be honest. Um, the way things were going at, at the Bunnies obviously didn't work out for me on the field. And, you know, I look back now, it's probably probably partly to blame myself, you know. Being, going there, um, you know, I, I, the Tigers brought out in the best in me because I was so emotionally attached and connected. And I think I'm, I'm the type of person where when I've got that emotional attachment and that care brings out brings out the best in me on the field and... Going to the bunnies, I I never replicated that. I, I never found that that feeling, and I was always Robbie from the Tigers. I was never I was never part of the fabric at Robbie, the bunnies, and, and it probably bunnies. yeah, it doesn't sound right, does it? Um, and it never it never brought out the best of me on the field. And then my career was kind of spiraling, you know, downhill pretty quickly. And then, mate, I thought it was just going to end for me at you know some like North Sydney Oval on a Friday night or whatever it was. And, um, but then the way things worked out for me to come back to the Tigers uh, now, it's like I look back now, it's just unbelievable, really. Um, mm. and, and not just for me to be there, but to be back there with Benji, who, you know, we started our careers together there. And then mm. we kind of went down separate paths. And, you know, he, he you know, everyone knows his story, went over to rugby and things like that, didn't work out. And then he came back there. And then I went away and came back. And it was, it was just such a... Um, it was just, I don't know, like a bit of a rom- like a bit of romance to the story or something, you know what I mean? And um Yeah, yeah. To fin to finish on on my terms there, uh the way it happened that last day at Leichhardt, even though um yeah, that last day was pretty crazy. Um and and we lost the game, which was pretty crap to be honest, but to get an opportunity to to run out one last time in front of a you know, my family and friends and a packed crowd. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm t- t- yeah, it's just I'm pretty content now, you know, it's um I got to do some things that um, a lot of other people wouldn't. So I'd be, I'm just I'd be grateful for that. As well. I'd be pretty content as well. Every time I looked at my bank balance, there was like six million there. <laughs> <laughs> That's, there you go. You oh, go. Actually, I'm, I'm, no, no, I was, I was saying six million. Must have made some withdrawals. <laughs> I thought there was more in that. <laughs> Rob, I remember like that last day, I remember kind of being in the sheds. You and Madge were there. And I remember yeah. like how this kind of works is I guess like, People probably don't know, but when there's kind of, if there's a late change like that, you've got to really quickly run the details up to the broadcasters because obviously Fox, yeah. I think it was a Fox game, and Fox are live on TV. Yeah. I kind of remember Madge saying, you know, like Corey's out, so Mommers goes to fullback, Chi goes to the centres, and Robbie goes to the bench. And I remember kind of having to sprint upstairs to tell the PA guy, and I think yeah. you, you probably were still in the sheds at that point having a talk with the boys. Mate, I don't know. Did you did you hear that initial first roar when it got announced that you were actually playing? No, I did. I then? didn't. And um, like having spoken to my family and friends, uh, they were in the crowd, uh, or like they knew I wasn't playing. I was never playing. Mm. Uh, they all knew that. Um, but they showed up to obviously just be there and enjoy what was potentially going to be my last day if um, if we'd lost. And and then words started to filter through, and and then. The way they tell me, they they thought it was a joke. 
they, they thought, no, nah, no, nah, someone's having us on here. And then they started, they started getting their phones out and they started getting um, the, the NRL app up and getting the live feed to, um, to get all the pregame stuff on Fox. And then they saw it kind of unfold on their phones and, and everyone was kind of in disbelief as to what was going on. And um, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I didn't hear the announcement. I still don't know if everyone knew I was kind of playing because like haven't spoken to a few people after. I know I spoke to John Morris, who was the coach of the Sharks and uh, he, he thought I wasn't playing. Um, mm. But then he saw me run the team out. He went up to the coach's box. He saw me run the team out, lead the team out. And then he thought, oh, well, how nice is that? He thought the Tigers are letting Robbie run, run the team out <laughs> on his last day. And then, and then he saw me walk off the field and then go sit down on the bench. And then he said he radioed through to his assistant on, down on the sideline. He goes, what the F is Robbie doing sitting on the bench? And they go, mate, he's playing. He goes, what do you mean he's playing? So he, had, he actually had no idea that I was actually playing until he saw me sitting on the bench after I'd led the team out. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy the way it all unfolded. That running out, mate, that kind of just looked pretty amazing. Like you just looked to be trying to soak all that up. Is that kind of what was going through your head? That just, like that noise, mate, at, at Leichhardt, like I, I know you've heard some massive crowds and noises, and, mm. but mate, that's as loud as I've heard it. That when you ran out with the boys then, that's as loud as it's, it's been. And that must have yeah. just been just you just pinching yourself trying to soak it all in. But also yeah. then compose for a game, you know, yeah. like it's. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, mate. And it, it's funny, like when I, when I played my. Well, even that last year, every time I played at Leichhardt that last year, I thought, well, you never know. This might be your last one because you never know if you get injured or whatever. And I remember my 301st game against uh, the Cowboys where we celebrated my 300th. Mm. And that, that was a special night. You know, I remember, I remember scoring a try in the first half and walking back to halfway and, and the crowd was chanting my name. Yeah, yeah. And I remember just pausing for, you know, four or five seconds and just listening to it. And I added this little smile on my face. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, I was like, mate, like enjoy this because it's all going to be over soon, mm. you know? And, um, and then I thought that was going to be my last night after I got injured. I thought, shit, you know, I've been robbed of um, that last game at Leichhardt. Um, but I thought, you know, I, I will. Um, I got to play about that 300th there. And that was a pretty, mm. that was a pretty special night, one I'll always remember. But then, but then to, to get that, that last one on that Sunday Arvo, um, as I mentioned, it was pretty crap because we'd lost. We didn't make the semis. Um, but then to, and then even to get that lap of honour afterwards around the around the, grand, um, the ground. Um, considering the circumstances that I left in in 16, mm. um, to find myself three years later doing it again, but for all the right reasons. Yeah. Um, as I said, mate, I just had to pinch myself. And um, I'm, I'm just on the backside, really, that it all worked out the way it did after what had happened a few years earlier. Yeah, and full mate for you, I guess just on that, you're kind of looking at all this from home. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm sure you're still in contact with all the boys and probably yeah. reading all the stuff in the paper throughout the week about Willie won't he? Willie won't he? What What did yeah. you think? Did you think he was any chance of playing? He was. He was reading every day because he wanted to know for his <laughs> super coach team. Did you think he was going to play? If you had to be like, did you? Like, I guess you kind of. No, talk. I think I asked him. I think I asked no, him. You, I think I, he said no. So, yeah, I, I spoke to you during the I spoke to you during the week, and you asked me, and I said, "No, nah, no." Nah. I said, "I'm not." But so he basically lied to my face. So. Nah, I wish. Yeah, that's right. I'll remember that <laughs> next time you ask me for something. <laughs> you lied to me. And now, right? Yeah. yeah. You go. No, you go. No, nah, no. Nah, I just said, mate. I was. I was never playing. Everyone. Everyone still thinks yeah, that sure. it was a setup. I was. I was sitting at home the night before. My brother had flown down from Brisbane. Um, to be there at my last game, and and he came over the night before, and we went up the road and got some dinner, and then. Came back home and had a glass of scotch sitting on my balcony. <laughs> and, um, and I was up till about three in the morning watching the Ashes. Because the Ashes were on at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was up, I was watching the cricket. And I thought, you know what, just go to sleep and make sure you enjoy tomorrow. Even though you're not playing, soak it up. And I, I, I never, yeah, I was never playing. <laughs> just bring your boots in case. Just bring your boots yeah. in case. <laughs> Mate, obviously then kind of Rob, retirement now, I guess... You, you spoke about 247. Um, you're obviously doing your, your stuff with On Solar. I think I saw you're part of the Channel 7 team as well, I guess. Mate, how's retirement going? And I guess, weirdly, can you believe the timing of retiring and then now the season gets suspended? Yeah, well, to be honest, I'm, I'm really enjoying retirement. Um, I thought... No, I definitely didn't miss pre-season. I was... Um, yeah, I was still in the Tigers WhatsApp group and, yeah, I was over in the UK at, watching Premier League matches. I was in Dubai. 
I was, I was going all over and then, and the boys were putting up, yeah, their training schedule for the morning. So, so it'd be like 11 o'clock at night or whatever it be. I'm at some bar in the UK and the boys are putting up their training schedule at 7am for their day of preseason. And, uh, and I was just having a laugh. I was like, mate, definitely don't miss this. And I, I thought, I thought once the season started that I'd, I'd probably miss, miss footy a bit more. But uh, to be honest, I really haven't. I've, I've enjoyed sitting back and just watching it um, as a spectator. And I think Liam will probably agree. Um, well, the biggest thing for me is just um, like mentally just having that break. Um, yeah. Footy, everyone, everyone sees the 80 minutes on a weekend. They don't see the work that goes into it day to day. And, you know, the, the physio, the stretching, the... The uh, the rehab, the icing your injuries, and all that, and then you do that for so long, and it and it um that's what that's what wears you down, and and mm. for me, I was just I don't think I was I could hand on heart say I was a hundred percent if I if I went another year that I'd be a hundred percent committed to doing all those things the way I've always done in my whole career, yeah, and that's that's how I knew I had to retire, and um mm-hmm. and now just now you've got a life, you know, like I I get to do what I want when I want to, you know um. You're flexible. You, you get to make your own decisions, um, and that's something I'm, I'm really enjoying. So, mm. um, and I feel for those boys. Like you, you talk about guys having a, uh, that, that like me retiring last year. How fortunate I am, and like I hope, like guys, like, I don't know if Benji's going to go around again next year or not, or what he's doing, or Chris Lawrence, guys like that. But if this is going to be their last year, I, I just feel really sorry for them because potentially they're going to have to play their last game in front of an empty stadium and. I just don't think that's fair um, for players you know, that have given their heart and soul to our club and, and blood, mm. sweat, and tears. You know, to to finish like I look back at that last day for me at Leichhardt, and I got to do a lap of honour in front of a sold out crowd. Yeah, yeah. And I just hope they get some sort of I don't know what it's going to be, but it'd just be a shame if they don't get that. Oh yeah, and I think that's yeah. right across the game. You know, and, and players, that, that's every club. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like Darius Boyd. You know, that's you know, three hundred gamers and that kind of thing. And you know, 100%. Kind yeah, of deserve so. something else. So, well, look, yeah. yeah, as you say, fingers crossed that kind of there's enough that can change between now and kind of October, November, whenever the season ends up finishing. That you know, yeah. there's a way to make it happen. So, otherwise, I'll just have to go another year, I think. <laughs> yeah, just lock them in, lock them in. Well, boys, uh, some great stories of the past. What we might do is we might just take a little break and then we're just going to finish up with one little game just to have a bit of fun to finish on. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. You're listening to the Beyond the 80 podcast. I'm joined by West Tigers legend Robbie Farrah and Liam Fulton. Uh, fellas, we're, we're going to play a little game. with We play it with a few of the guests on here. It's called You're the Coach. And I'm keen to get your take on this. Obviously, uh, Fultz coaching expert. Um, Robbie, you've been around the game you know, a lot. You kind of know people. So here's what's going to happen. Let me just explain what it is. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a kind of a one game. You've got a grand final. Right, you've got a grand final that you're picking your team for, and there's six spots that are kind of free in your team. So what I want you to do is I want you to not pick a teammate that you've played with, because that kind of puts you in a bit of tough spot. All right. So don't don't I mean Australia and New South Wales, that's probably okay, but like leave out your West Tigers teammates. You know you we know you'd kind of want to pick those guys. I want to try and think about who are the guys that you you did. pick pick some of your city origin teammates, Fools. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you some old crab tree, front and right. <laughs> I just wanted to have a think about six spots. What I'm going to do is we'll get you to pick three each, all right? So I'll, I'll tell you what spots you kind of need to try and fill. I want you to try and think about maybe guys that you didn't play with that you kind of wish you'd, you'd had the chance to play with. Maybe that might be, that might be a good one. So, um, Rob, I'll get you to kind of, you might try and pick the spine if you can, Rob. So I'll get you to pick a fullback, kind of a halfback, five eight. And a hooker mm. for those three spots. And then Fultz, Mr. Versa, versatile. I'll get you to pick uh, an outside back, a second rower, and a front rower. Okay, so maybe oh, just Because I play hooker with um, Cameron Smith. So, I, uh, you know, all stars, bro. So I couldn't, um, couldn't pick him. <laughs> yeah. Well, Robbie, great, great Robbie I'll, I'll start with you <laughs> at, at fullback. And you now, of course, fullback being the position you, uh, you played as a little youngster there as well, mate. Is that, that's, that's, mm. that's true, isn't it? Yeah. True story, yeah. True story. Played well, Ed, back, Field, uh, Ed, Ed Field depends on the 12s. Does that count? No, nah, Leichhardt Wanderers. I think it was under 14s or 15s. 14s, maybe. So the coach's son was the hooker. So they moved me to fullback. Um, yeah, I loved that. My nickname was the general. Like, <laughs> Luke Patton. Luke Patton, yeah. yeah no. I don't know why, but they, yeah. 
I don't know if I played like Luke Patton <laughs> or something, but no, but I, I pretty much played like a second five eight to be honest. I enjoyed it because I just got to move all over the field. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, everything you've obviously played with, you know, like a, you yeah. think about your time in Australia and, and Lebanon, you were to play, you know, for and with some great guys. Was there a fullback that you, you wish you kind of had the chance to play with throughout your career that you, you never quite got the chance or? Um, yeah, look, to, to be honest, when, when I left um, the Tigers uh, and I had a decision to make to which club to go to, it was either, it was either going to be, I don't know if anyone knows, but it was either the Sharks or, or, or the Bunnies. Mm. And the thing that kind of tipped me over the edge to go to the Bunnies was uh, I wanted to play with Greg Inglis as yep. a fullback. Um, I thought, especially being a hooker, I, I found that when I, when I played really good football, I had a good fullback around me always you know, sniffing up my backside if that makes sense. Yep. Um, just, just always, so, just always so on speak. my, yeah, just yeah. always on my heel, always on my heels. We are waiting for an opportunity, and I think um, a good fullback brought out the best in me. So, um, I really want to play with Greg Inglis, and the way it worked out, I went to the Rabbitohs. He he did his ACL in that first round of the yeah. season against the played, Tigers. Yeah, against the Tigers, played half a game with him, and, and that was it. So uh, that was that was a good move. Um, so, so he was probably one. And the other one who I, I had the opportunity to play alongside and, and people ask me who the best player I've ever played with. And I think on his day would be up there with the best I played with is Jared Hayne. Yep. Um, yeah, he was just a freak of a talent. And when, when he was in form, he was unstoppable. Yep. Um, so he'd, it'd be one of them two, to be honest, that, would, yeah, right. that I'd pick in my team. Yeah, nice. But do I have to pick one? I'd go Hayne because he's a New South Welshman. Yeah, nice. Don't like Queenslanders. But you played with him, though, City Country. He said no yeah, but he said no, tiger, no, he said no Tigers teammates. I think Greg, you oh. played with Tigers? Yeah, what? like the Barrowville Bar- Tigers? Oh, <laughs> You've got too much time in your head. <laughs> Go away, mate. Outside back, Fultz. Outside back. Who's, who's someone that you kind of kind of wish you, you'd had the chance to play with throughout your career, mate? You kind of winger or a centre, someone there? Uh, I really enjoy Scott Minto. I reckon he's um, probably take him. <laughs> He's got you in the looks department. <laughs> looks uh, uh, outside, outside back, what, just uh, maybe. Um, <clears throat> I thought you were going to say second row. Didn't you say second row? Well, yeah, you've got you've got three. I've got second row first because I've already thought about him. All second right, row. Second row. You can. Yeah. Second row. Right. I, I reckon my favorite my favorite player is probably like right now or in, in the current in the era would have been Sam Burgess. Yeah. Like he was just. I played against him in uh, in 2009 in, in England, and he, he was playing for Bradford. He came off the bench, and he absolutely smashed me, like hammered me. Like I think he dislocated my shoulder. But I remember him come, when he came back when he came to uh, South in 2010. I thought this guy was going to be a gun because he was so good for Bradford. Yeah. So he's my he's my fr- fr- favourite. But going back a little bit further, probably Steve Menzies. Yep. Oh, he was. Yeah, I love Steve Menzies. So I would have to take probably Burgess though. Yeah. Nice. Uh, to win a grand final, you're taking Burgess any day of the week. It's a fair call. It's a fair call. Uh, Robbie, what about a, a kind of halfback 5'8"? Was there one that you kind of... Obviously, I guess you, you're pretty... You know, you said it before, you're pretty blessed to have played with Benji for a lot of your career. And that's a tough a tough bar to match up with. Is there someone else that you mm. kind of had, had looked at that you wish you had the chance to kind of combine with there? Is this is this during my my era? Are we talking, or or can I go back? Or oh, you can go back if you want. I just I just didn't know if there was someone in particular that you kind of uh, wish you had the chance to. Yeah, well, well, look, I got the opportunity, I guess, um, to play alongside guys like Thurston and and Lockyer and that when I when the the limited chances I got in the Australian side, and then um, obviously the the teams I played with in New South Wales as well. So, but I think um, it's yeah, it's. It's kind of hard because um, I don't want to pick any Queenslanders, to be honest. So, Thurston, Thurston would be one. Uh, I, I love Thurston because uh, of how competitive he was. I, I loved how hard he worked off the ball. Yep. Um, number everyone one. saw. Sammy's number one client. Yeah, number one. I was always number two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we paid off Sammy Abe's house. It's all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, now Thur- Thurston be one because I love his competitiveness. Um, grow- growing up, I was a massive Terry Lamb fan. Uh, I think you said he, that he was like my yeah. idol. Yeah, he was my idol. So I still, I still now to this day, I, I got the, my ticket from his last ever game. I got it laminated and I kept it in my wallet. And um, I remember showing it to him one day when I met him, and um, and he was blown away by that. So 
I always used to love uh, Terry Lamb. Um, he'd always just be supporting up the middle of the field. He scored so many tries from just supporting up the middle. And um, yeah, if I had to pick a, a, a dream team, he'd be in there for sure. Yeah, nice. All right, Fultz, have you had time to think about an outside back here? Yeah, I reckon um, my, well, one that I played against all the time and he used to always covers up and I would have loved to play with him, even though Farrah's going to hate me because he's a Queenslander, will be uh, Justin Hodges. He, he was, I loved, I loved, <laughs> yeah. Mate, I, 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 every time he went to the dummy half and I was at marker, I just, I just knew that I couldn't tackle him. Like he just, he would just always get away. He was the best dummy half runner. And I, and he was always like, wanted to fight everyone as well. So we used to always kind of like say things to him. We used to always get angry. So yeah, I'd love to have him on my team as well. Him and Burgess, geez, Terry Lamb, mate, this is dream team. Rob, uh, you played against Justin Hodges a fair bit, mate. Is it one of those things where, yes, the bloke annoys the, the hell out of you, but when he does get to dummy half, he's pretty good? <laughs> yeah, he was pretty much a professional dummy half runner, to be honest. Um, right, he was always, good. I still remember, he'd be on our tip sheet every time we play against him for Origin. He'd always go to his right, and it was right, right foot step every time. Yeah, I know, he's uh, so good, man. But he was one, yeah, he's one of those players that you hated on the field. But he's actually a, a good bloke off it. So it was. Um, yeah. I tried. I tried my hardest to hate him um, off the field when I was oh, in really? camp with him. But um, he's a good bloke. Yeah, he was actually a good bloke. Same with Brent oh, Tate. Man. I remember Brent Tate. Well, um, I used to hate oh, Brent yeah. Tate. Yeah, most annoying too. bloke on the field. And then we were in the World Cup squad together over in England in 2013. And I was like trying my hardest to hate him. I was like, no, I'm supposed <laughs> to hate you, but he was actually like a legend of a bloke. And then after about two weeks, I was like. I hate you. I was like, man, I said, I'm trying my hardest to hate you. I said, but you're actually the best bloke in the world. <laughs> and um, I just, it annoyed me that he was a nice bloke because I had this Dude, image of him just being an idiot. Him. Yeah, I wanted to hate him. <laughs> yeah, I hate, I hate yeah. him on the field too. Hey. Yeah. Right. Rob, last spot for you, hooker. Now, a tough one, mate, because obviously you're probably not going to play with many hookers. Was there one that you kind of had looked to that you thought, you know, might have... Who, who, who kind of stands out, you know? Like, I guess you and Cameron Smith... I, are, Dominated the last yeah. years. Is I really, yeah, I really like the work. I really like the work Jordan Rankin did there when he when he played hooker at Tigers um, <laughs> in 2016. Um, I thought give, if, if given a, if given a bit more time, I, I really think that he could have um, been a superstar in that role. To be honest, <laughs> trying to set you up for that one, didn't I, mate? <laughs> uh, was, who would I pick? I don't know. Obviously, I, there's obviously the obvious ones who I um, played a lot of my career against. Yeah, a player that I really like now because of um, yeah his attacking ability. Someone like a Josh Hodgson. Um, yeah, yeah, he, he's quite like I, I like play. I, you know, I was always a player that backed myself. I didn't really he's enjoy too much. Yeah, I didn't really enjoy too much structure, and I, I think I found. You know, I always played eyes up football, and that's what I see um, with Hodgson, um, and it's something mm. I really enjoy. You know, he's very. Um, Instinctive, very reactive to what the defense is doing. A lot, I find a lot of hookers these days are just really, really structured, which I don't enjoy. So uh, he's he's a he's one out of the box for me. So yeah. I, I enjoy that. I enjoy yeah. watching him. And is that, I guess, a bit of credit to Ricky too, like for bringing that out in him? Like, was he is he that kind of coach that kind of allows that? Or yeah, I think good coaches do that. You know, they they allow their players to express themselves, and there's no point having someone like a Josh Hodgson, but then making him play in a role that he's not comfortable with. So um, that obviously, that's obviously a role that he enjoys and a role that brings out the best in him. So, so you encourage that. Mm. All right. So we've got Inglis, we've got Burgess, we've got Terry Lamb, we've got Justin Hodges, we've got Josh Hodgson. Fultz, around us off here. Who's your, who's your front rower? Front rower? I thought you were going to say winger. Um, front rower? Well, in the modern day that I didn't play with, Jesus. I don't know. I thought you were going to say winger. I can't. Farrah, help me with the front row. Give me some good front rows in the modern day. Oh, I can think. I think. I can think of the old ones, but is, think, that, is that like who said mate, someone that you wish you had the chance to kind of you know? Oh, play you know with? what? Like, I probably, probably wish I'd, I'd move Sam Burgess to the front row and I'd put buddy Gordon Tallis. I'd love to play for Gordon Tallis. Mate, he was, he's a he's a machine. Yeah, I'll take Gordon Tallis. I want to play. I want big people around me so they look after me. <laughs> So just clarify. I'll have to picked, say Gordon Tallis. You Mate, Gordon another, Tallis in the another Queenslander. Run. Yeah, right. Yeah, and Justin <laughs> Hodges and, and Tim Burgess. Was he? I think he's been to Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Boys, is there a, was there a coach? Is there a coach that you kind of wish? Obviously, you guys had Sheensy for such a large part of your career, and he's obviously you know kind of up there with one of the best coaches that the game's ever had. Is there was there a coach that you kind of had always respected in the game that you thought you'd wish you'd, you'd had the chance to kind of play under or learn from it all? Or yeah, I was I was pretty fortunate. Um, I got to play under some great coaches. Um, you know, in origin, it's got guys like Ricky Stewart, who I absolutely love. Um, you know, Freddie Laws, um, Wayne, Wayne Bennett was one. I, I, I got the opportunity under Wayne in the All Stars. You know, it was only for a week, but you can see why he's loved by uh, all of his players. Um, he's, he's not the person that you see in the media. Yeah. Um, you know, he's uh, he's quite a larrikin actually, and he's someone I probably would have I would have loved to have played a bit more footy under. Another another one I, like probably a bit left field. He doesn't coach anymore, but I would have loved to have played under Phil Gould. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He just, he just um, comes across as a really knowledgeable sort of person. And he, I, I still remember he came in one day in an origin camp. I think Sticky brought him in and he gave us this talk for about an hour and you could hear a pin drop. I, I remember when the talk was finished, it was like a, it was a Tuesday night before origin. So like eight days out from a game. Yep. And I remember that talk finished and I, I wanted to play then and there. I wanted to just <laughs> run out onto the field. He had me that pumped up and I just, I thought it would have been, been really good to play under Phil Gould. Yeah. Fultz, is there one for you, Matt? No, I reckon Wayne, I, I, when I did play All-Stars, I remember Wayne Bennett was speaking at the, uh, just before kickoff and it was just, obviously it's just a trial match and no one, you know, when it was just the All-Stars game, no one was, uh, you know, cared too much about it. But I remember when he was speaking, and I was that pumped up. It was like a bloody grand final. I was that pumped up for it. I can't remember what he said. Yeah. So, I can't I, speaking I about trial matches, before we finish, can I tell a funny story about Fultz? <laughs> I'd love you to tell a funny story about Fultz. Uh, finish so up we, here, mate. We, we had a preseason camp up at, um, was it, where Runaway was it? Got, Runaway yeah, Bay. Somewhere up there in, in Queensland. And anyway, so we had a couple of uh, religious people in our, in our team, myself and Keithy Galloway and that. We'd, we'd always yeah, do the cool. sign of the cross when we'd, you know, run out onto the field and, um, yeah, we'd go to church or whatever it may be, and, and Fultz was Fultz a bit of an atheist, and he'd always yeah. um, he'd mock us, and he's like, you know, oh, God, God doesn't exist. Like, he, like you guys are like talking to this imaginary person, blah blah blah, and we'd get the shits with him. And then oh, um, to roll him up a bit. Mate. Yeah, he'd roll us up a bit, and then we're playing this trial match. Bit. We're playing this. Who were we playing? Was it Canberra? We're, we're playing, no, was it the local oh, team? Yeah, no, 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 no. It was Canberra because it was uh, Josh Miller. Got me. Yeah. So then, so we're in the sheds before this, before the game, and Fulch is on his, he's on his rant about how God's fake and all this stuff. And then, and we're like Liam, like shut up, shut the f up. And then he goes, he goes, if God's, he goes, if God's real, he goes, he'll break my neck tonight, <laughs> right? And we're like, mate, you, you can't say that, Liam. You can't like, like, mate, what are you doing? You can't challenge God. And he's like, no, no, if God's real, I'll, like break. And then, was it the kickoff or the kickoff of the second half? Second half. Kick off the second half, so I can't remember. So we've we've kicked <laughs> off. Yeah, I <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> we've kicked off, and then and then we've run down. Josh Miller's run back at Fultz. Fultz has got his head in the wrong spot. Knocked himself out clean. They've had to call an ambulance. They've called a stretcher. Got a neck brace out. <laughs> All right, he's he's out cold. They've had to taken him off in a neck. And me and Keith are standing over the top of him, just going, "That's what you get. That's what you get for challenging God." And then and then he's. After the game, we go in the sheds and he's there and he's come to his, his you know, got his wits about him again. And so we, we go up to him like, mate, you're an idiot. And he's like, what? He's like, have I broken my neck? He's like, it's not real. <laughs> he goes, my neck's, my neck's sweet. God's and then, not real. And then you kept saying, no, he just sent you a warning. I said, yeah, that was, just, that was just a warning. That was just a warning. <laughs> and then Cheesy pulled me into his office uh, when we got back to Sydney and he's like, all right, Liam. I know you think that God, you, you know, you, you're an, you may be an atheist, right? And he goes, and I am as well, but no more challenging God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. But I just yeah. remember everyone, like, everyone was concerned. Liam's like lying on the ground, motionless. And me and Keith just standing over the top and just spraying him. He's going, that's good what you get, mate. Yeah. That's good teammates. <laughs> yeah. Well, boys, uh, thank you for your time today and going through a few old stories. Very much appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in uh, for, obviously, uh, all the iTunes reviews and comments. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you rate and review. Uh, that'll keep all the good content uh, coming in. Uh, Liam, what's on for the rest of today, mate? Uh, mate, just work. You know, back to work. Mate. Just grinding away. Back, back to babysitting, work. <laughs> bit, bit, of, bit, of, bit of war zone. Yeah, nice. Rob, what's, what's on for yeah. the rest of the week, mate? 
Mate, I'm selling some solar panels, mate. Liam wants a uh, report done up for his house, so yeah, I've got to get a report, report done up for, to get some solar panels on Liam's roof. We'll just get that in one more uh, time, mate. That was On Solar Australia, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate. Mitchell, on, on Mitchell Solar Australia. Name. Tiger sponsors. You get, uh, you get 50% yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> Mates rates. Well, boys, thank you for your time today. Thank you to Ned's for your support of the show. Uh, and until next time, we'll catch you on the Beyond the 80 podcast. Mm-hmm.